And parents, I want to let you know something. Here's a secret. When you make the halal difficult, you make the haram accessible. When you make the halal something difficult for your children, you are giving them permission to do the haram because you made it easier for them. When you make having a nikah difficult, you've made dating easier. When you have made the process of someone coming to ask for your child's hand difficult, you have made sliding into someone's DMs easier. That's the reality. Way of life as cute. Even in hunted. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yisalli amri wa ahla al-uqda tamin lisan yafqahu qawli. We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we thank Him for everything that He has provided for us. And we send blessings and salutations upon the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon him, his companions, his household, and of course, all of you as well. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, to bless you all, and to forgive us of all of our sins. Ameen. Before we continue with today's topic, there was... Two things that I wanted to mention first. The first and foremost is that uh, next to the title of, of the flyer, it said Sheikh. MashaAllah. I think they were talking about a milkshake and not like a real Sheikh. So just to let you know, that was out of a term of honor and just like dignity, but it's not a term of education or that title because just like calling someone a doctor is a prestigious thing because they've studied so much for that, just know that a sheikh or scholar is of that title as well. So we should be very careful with who we call, but just to clarify, I am not of that. Second thing I would like to mention is our hearts, our du'as, our condolences goes out to everyone who lost someone in yesterday's tragic and gruesome shooting in Germany and also in the stabbing that took place at London Central uh, Mosque near Regent's Park. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and protect the ummah, protect the Muslims across the globe and allow us to be the best to each other. Today's topic is about the state of the ummah and honestly, I'd be doing you a disservice if I left you at that. If I just let you at the state of the ummah, because the state of the ummah is obvious. But the real question is, SQ, how do we move the state of the ummah? How do we shift the state from one state to the next state? And that's what today's khutbah is going to be about. Uh, you know, the talk for today is going to be about at least. And then we're going to be following up with the actual Arabic khutbah like you always do traditionally. I'm going to be leaving you with two, two lessons and how we can actually use those to inspire our lives to change our current state and make us much better. The first thing I want to share with you is a story from a book called Kitab At-Tawabin, narrated by Ibn Qudama. It's about Musa al-Islam. And it's about how Musa al-Islam, as we know, with Bani Israel, was one of the toughest, most rigid people that he could be around. And at this time, there was a huge drought, a huge drought. This drought didn't allow for any crops, any water. It was just terrible. There was no rain. So, of course, the people of Musa al-Islam, being who they were, they're like, you know, ask your Lord for something. Help us out over here. So Musa al-Islam made dua to Allah as he usually does close to Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned something. He mentioned that how amongst your flock of people, there's one person who is not only engaged in a sin, but they haven't done something which is a crime against themselves, which is impacting everyone at the same time. And that crime is not the sin, but the inability to seek forgiveness for that sin. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us prone to sin. It's almost in our DNA. We are prone and inclined to sin. But what makes us special, what elevates us is our ability to seek forgiveness. So amongst the flock of Musa alayhi islam, his, his people, there was someone who committed the greatest of sins, which is not seeking Allah's forgiveness. So he told Musa that there's someone amongst you who hasn't sought forgiveness. And when he announced this, a few moments later, 
it started to rain. Mashallah, the beautiful weather changed, everything improved for the people. People got so happy. All because this person had turned back to Allah. So the story continues where Musa a.s. asks Allah Azza wa Jalla, and this is a bonus lesson for you all. Musa a.s. asks Allah Azza wa Jalla that, who, who's this blessed person who helped bring the rain? They brought the rain. What happened? Who is this person? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala corrected, immediately showing how when he was sinning, I never exposed him. What makes you think I'm going to expose him now? What we need to understand was that his forgiveness, his repentance, his tawbah is what allowed the rain to come. The blessings to be released from the skies. The reason I'm mentioning this story is because think about our state right now. How many amongst us have not sought Allah's forgiveness? How many of us right now is the reason the blessings haven't opened up from the skies? And that's a metaphorical reference. The blessings from the skies can actually be rain, but it also could be just barakah, goodness. If you're asking yourselves, why is there so much fitna, facade, and just harms in the world? Why is this happening, SQ? It's because amongst us, there's people who haven't truly, sincerely turned back to Allah. I'm not expecting you to be, to, to be perfect. I don't expect that, and that wouldn't be fair. But what I do expect is that if we want to change our state, if we want to improve our lives, if we want the barakah to be flowing on the entire ummah, we need to seek repentance and turn back to Allah. We learn from this story that your actions impact other people. So those dodgy business dealings that you do, don't think that you're just cheating someone. No, 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 no. Not only are you cheating yourself and them, but you're cheating the ummah from actually receiving the full benefits that we deserve. The next time you're about to do something shady, something wrong, think about this for a second. Am I that person that would be in that flock at the time of Musa al-Islam who has not sought Allah's forgiveness? I want you to sincerely ask yourself this question. Where am I? Where am I currently with my repentance towards Allah? Where am I currently with my level of respect and admiration for Allah? Are you someone who is doing your best so that barakah and blessings could be flowing in your own home? If your home is messed up, your children are messed up, ask yourself, have I not sought forgiveness yet? If not, turn back to Allah. If you're like, where is the rain, the blessings, the barakah in my house? Why are there so many fights? Why are my children not listening to me? Why is there all this friction between me and my children? Ask yourselves, Amongst you, are you the person who hasn't sought forgiveness? You see, it's easy to look for others. It's easy to look for others. But the true test of hypocrisy needs to be looked within themselves. There was a companion who came to the messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this companion was famous and they were known for being the companion who was the knower of all secrets. They had the secrets. So the messenger saw us when he was revealed the names of the hypocrites of Medina, he shared it with one person and that was this companion. So this companion knows and uh, he knew the names of the hypocrite, never revealed them, not once. So Umar bin Khattab comes to him. He tries to use his rank. You know, he's Umar bin Khattab, he's a big deal. It's Umar bin Khattab, Amir al-Mu'mineen soon to come. He asks him, who, who were these names that were revealed to you? Listen to this. Who were these names Listen to you? Umar bin Khattab was not interested in the tea. He was interested in the gossip. Listen to why he asked. He asked the companion who was the secret holder, the vault, the safe of the names of the hypocrites that was revealed to the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Listen. Umar bin Khattab asks him, who are these people? Who are these names? The companion said, I can't reveal that to you. I've promised the messenger, alayhi salam, that I can't do that. Or Khattab persisted, and then he asked one question. He's like, okay, okay. My only question to you is this. Is Omar's name on that list? 
Is Omar bin Khattab's name on that list of hypocrites? It's easy to point fingers. It's easy to look at others for your problems. But the real question you got to ask yourself is, am I the reason... Am I the reason that the rain from the skies, the barakah, the blessings has not poured on us, poured on the ummah? Are my secret sins when no one's watching? Is that what's causing this? Is my lack of forgiveness from those sins causing this? If so, turn back to Allah. Turn back to Allah and just watch how Allah takes care of you. Turn back to Allah and just watch how your family situation improves. Turn back to Allah and watch how your community, your society, the masjid, and step by step by step, gradually the entire ummah improves. Why? Because we all have been concerned with seeking forgiveness and being conscious of Allah. Azawajal. The second thing I would like to mention to you for why the state of the ummah is the way it is. This is a powerful one. And wallahi, this is something that can cause tons of fitna. Huge. I see it daily. The Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, taught us that if there comes to you a proposal of someone that you are satisfied with their quality, their good character, their deen, then marry your child to them. Marry them to them. Because if you don't listen, this is the most important part. If you don't, fitna, facade, just wrongfulness, evil will be widespread on the earth. If you're wondering why we are the way we are, it's because we've learned to take the opinions of others at a higher rank than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. We have learned to prioritize the people of what will they say if I marry someone who is of a darker complexion, my daughter too. What will they say if I marry someone who comes from a different lineage or tribe or heritage or last name? What will they say? What if I marry someone to someone who's not that, not that rich, not that good? You're so focused on what they will say that you've missed the hadith of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You're so focused on what they will think about you that you've forgotten to wonder, hang on a second, what will Allah think about me? Will Allah not question me? You're so focused on what they will question you, but have you thought for a second, hang on, won't Allah question me? There's so many youth who message me with this concept that my parents are making marriage so difficult for me this person is good this person does this they're a good person at least i feel that is but my parents won't even give them a chance why because they come from a different family they come from a different background they come from a different descent they come from a different ethnicity that is the reason they are rejecting the proposal pure ego and arrogance and parents i want to let you know something here's a secret when you make the halal difficult, you make the haram accessible. When you make the halal something difficult for your children, you are giving them permission to do the haram because you made it easier for them. When you make having a nikah difficult, you've made dating easier. When you have made the process of someone coming to ask for your child's hand difficult, you have made sliding into someone's DMs easier. That's the reality. So if you're wondering why the state of the ummah is the way it is, ask yourselves, are you the cause of this? If you are in the condition that you have had a proposal come to you for your child, or you know a child that is struggling and you are their aunt, you are their uncle, can you at least advocate for them? Can you help them a little bit? Can you just be the, you know, the third party who just does the proper judgment that is a little better for them? Can you take that responsibility? I believe we can. Because if you marry your child to someone because of their, you know, their, their, their lineage and their wealth and their status, you might be marrying them for the wrong reasons. And your beautiful child is now with someone who is not at the same level as them. And instead of that person raising them to a higher standard of deen and iman, they start dragging them down. 
So your beautiful daughter who was going to be married to a mashallah pious, probably even a half of the Quran, you're like, no, 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 I don't want a half is mashallah. I want someone who has a Range Rover instead. I want someone who could afford a house for you instead. That's who I want you to marry my daughter. And when that becomes your standard, your beautiful flower of a daughter goes to someone who instead who was going to read Quran with her at Fajr doing good things. Now they're dragging them down and it's all about the image. They want to take them off. Oh, why are you wearing this cloth in your head? It's embarrassing me. Take off the hijab. That's how it starts. So if you're wondering where does the facade and the fitna are becoming widespread, that's how it happens. Because the standards that you have for your children go down. And when you lower your standards, naturally the quality of your work depreciates as well. I'm going to end it on one final note for you, inshallah. I'm going to end it on how we can fix this. It's easy to talk and complain about the problems, but how do we fix this is the question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, chapter 2, verse 286, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not burden a soul with more than what they can bear. So I first want to let you know that if you, you know, oftentimes we look at our social media and we see this happening and that happening and you, you feel so broken because you feel so powerless and you're like, look what's happening to the ummah of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at what they've sacrificed for this. Look at what's happening on the social media. You see these posts and they're horrific. They hurt your heart. Why, Allah, what's happening? Even the companions at one time asked the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they asked, and this is recorded in the book of Allah, when will the help of Allah come? Where is the help of Allah? We need it. They're desperate. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the help of Allah is indeed near. It's on its way. It's coming. It's here. Hang on. Be patient. If you see that we are in this state right now, it's because Allah knows we can handle it. We can handle it. And we can get out of it. Allah would never burden us with more than what we can handle. So he is allowing this to happen so that we can become better people. We can become people of sincere repentance, of sincere uh, Quran recitation, sincere followings of the teachings of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so that we can improve our ranks in Jannah. But he knows that we are fully qualified and capable of solving our matters. But they cannot be solved unless we all agree and come to a decision with our, within our hearts today during this talk that I'm going to change. I'm going to change my state. I don't want this state anymore. I want to change my state. And that happens from you raising your values, raising your standards. When you're about to sin, you say, no, 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 no. That's beneath me. I'm a Muslim. You raised your standards. I'm a Muslim. It's beneath me to sin. I don't do that sort of stuff. I don't sin. I don't do that. And if you do slip, you turn back to Allah. Why? Because he is indeed the most forgiving, the most merciful. He is indeed the one who will accept you exactly the way you are. Don't think you have to change for Allah. You don't have to change. You will improve and upgrade. There's a difference. Changing means you're changing who you are. Upgrading means you stay the way you are and you improve your relationship with Allah. You improve and beautify and perfect your character by remaining exactly the way they know you. But within your heart, within your manners, within your actions, you're changing slowly but surely to draw closest to Allah. So if you want this to happen, just remember, if you see the harms that are happening in the ummah right now, just know we can handle it. And we can get through it. We will get through it. Because Allah has given us all the tools needed, necessary, and required to get through it. But the only way that's going to happen is if we become sincere, serious people who seek the tawbah and repentance of Allah. When you do that and seek tawbah and repentance of Allah... Allah subhanahu wa tells us in the Quran that he will, you know, open the skies for you. He will flood for you, barakah and blessings, because you sought his forgiveness. And we need to be true, sincere people of forgiveness. And believe in Allah. Believe in Allah that Allah will make things better. Have a positive opinion of Allah. Believe in Allah 
and believe in yourself that you are the instrument that Allah Azza wa Jal will use to improve this ummah. Allah will use you to improve this ummah. You play a vital role to freeing Palestine. You play a vital role in improving the conditions of the world. You, not the youth, you. If you are listening to this, you play a role. Don't put the ownership on someone else. If you want to gain control of your life, it starts by you holding yourself accountable. Yourself accountable and knowing that you play a massive role in improving the ummah, improving the nation, improving the state of our condition right now. Because indeed, the Muslim body is one body and when one hurts, we all hurt. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for all the Muslims suffering across the globe. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us, for all of those who are suffering privately amongst each other, who are having those internal battles. We ask Allah subhanahu to make it easy for the youth to get married and make it halal for them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa to allow us to have a halal sense of earning and put barakah and blessings in our wealth, in our businesses, and our marriages as well. We ask Allah subhanahu wa to bless the ummah and especially the beautiful, beautiful people of this masjid and this beautiful city as well of Cape Town. Jazakallah for listening. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik nashidu wa la ilaha illa anta nastagfirullah wa